Dave from the Redneck Garage. Well, today is engine build day, believe it or not. We got the block back from Mark. We're going to be using engine tech parts uh, as far as the master kit to put it back together. Uh, I really do enjoy using engine tech because all the parts are the right ones. They do quality control. It's not like Engineer Johnny went through some bins over in China and picked out the right parts. Engine tech does a great job. So let's get started looking at what tools that you need and what procedures have to happen before we get this thing put together. First thing you'll be doing is be putting in the crank. Brady's here! He came over to give me some tips on assembly of the motor and everything, so I appreciate it. What you need, what's, your, what's your words of wisdom? Get her done. Get her done, okay. Awesome. Alright, when you rebuild an engine, you're going to need a couple extra special tools that you probably don't have, or if you do, then you've rebuilt the motor before. Uh, we'll start with these. These are plastic gauges. They're really used to go, yeah, it's good or bad. Um, in a more of a high performance engine uh, you would use specialty tools rather than a plastic gauge because they're not super accurate but they will tell you something. Um, you're going to need some assembly lube. Super super stuff. This has uh, got some graphite in it. There's three or four different kinds. Uh, I'm not that sold on any of them. Marvel Mystery Oil. This is really good when you're doing your pistons. You want a light oil to coat the cylinder walls to put the pistons in. This works great. The uh, engine lube you're going to use for like your bearings, but for your pistons, you want to use a, a conventional oil. You don't want to use synthetic, so Marvel works real well. And I've got a little pump oiler that I usually use just to squirt it in there. Awesome. You're going to need a ring installer. Uh, I've done it without this, but this makes it a lot easier. A ring compressor to do your pistons. You're going to put this over your piston to uh, compress the ring down to put it into the cylinder. And the most important tool that you're going to need to put an engine together is a torque wrench. And this is a snap-on torque-o-meter. It's a very expensive one. Uh, you set your gauge here and it works really, really well. Super expensive. It's been calibrated by um, the people at NASA, Moonshots. I don't know who calibrated the stupid thing. But that one's really expensive. Now, one thing that we are going to do is I'm going to compare it to the cheapo, similar to what you can get at Harbor Freight. This one didn't come from Harbor Freight. Regular uh, torque wrench. And I've been made fun of for using this one. But I will tell you this, these are actually pretty accurate, and we're going to verify that as we're building. Uh, the only thing that you can't do with these is if you leave it cranked up on a specific pound, it will mess up the spring. So if you take all the tension off, they're actually pretty accurate, even though Jerry thinks they're not. All right, when I bought my full kit, it came with bearings, uh, crank bearings and rod bearings here. And this is where you got to kind of be a little bit careful. These are standard bearings. This is a crank kit that I purchased and it's turned 10 over. So these bearings are 10 over bearings and these are standard. So we won't be using these. If we did, we'd have a problem. Well. While Randy drinks the beer, I'm going to talk. <laughs> the reason you use a plastic gauge is really to make sure that it's the right bearings with the right cap. Um, there's not a lot you can do if you have bad machine work. If Mark didn't bore the cylinders like they're supposed to be, or the machine shop that did the crank didn't turn it the way it's supposed to be, then there's issues. You know, you're not going to fix that. So I got a couple different tips for you uh, when you're rebuilding an engine. The first thing would be is get a copy of the manual and read it. I talked to Ethan, my youngest, and I said, you know how to rebuild a motor? He goes, well, I can get on YouTube and watch it. And you know what? That's true. However, I watched a guy yesterday. I was just kind of flipping through um, ring installation on pistons, and I was watching him, and I watched how he did the pistons on a, a 4.0, and he was completely wrong. He put the wrong ring on the wrong groove and put that up as the YouTube, here's how you do it. So you got to be careful about that. No from the manual the way to do it and you can watch a YouTube video but just be careful so I am a seasoned professional <laughs> so you know you can watch me and not worry about it anyway so let's get started putting the crank in and we're gonna start measurements to make sure that it's the right bearings and the right caps and that everything is copacetic before we crank it down with our torque wrench whether you have the 4.0 or the 2.5 these are your main bearing caps that go across and this is your end where your main uh, seal goes but you can see that these are actually numbered one, two, three, four, and then the main one. If for some reason they're not marked, before you take it apart, you best be taking a Dremel or a punch and marking which ones they go on because they are specific to that spot on the block. You don't want to be swapping caps around because they're machined to fit exactly where they're supposed to go. So we're going to lay in our bottom bearings and then we're going to drop in our crank and take a look at 
what the clearance is, and it should be about right. Let me get on the other side so I can see this hole. Okay, so then, all right, so the bearings we've got just laid in the spots where they go, and you can see the holes for the oil galley. Underneath there's your hole for the oil to come through on all the way across, and then we're going to press those down and get them set where they're supposed to be. Okay, we've got all our bottom bearings in pretty much flushed up where they're supposed to be. You want to make sure that there's no crap in there. And we're going to lay our uh, crank down to get a measurement. Okay, so we've got our crank laid in there. You don't want to be twisting around and rolling it because we certainly haven't put any lube on it. But we're going to get a measurement to make sure that um, it's about right as far as like the crush on it. Okay, and I'm going to lay my plastic gauge. You can see it here on the number three. And we've got our bearing in. Hand me my mallet. Mallet. Alright, so our cap is a torque to 80 pounds, so I'm going to torque it down to 80. Better eat your Wheaties. Okay, that's 80, and I'm going to try it with my uh, cheapo torque wrench just for grins and giggles. Okay, so I've got my cheapo torque wrench set at 80 pounds, and we'll see what it comes out at. I don't move it. Eighty. So it's exactly the same as the $250 snap-on, the $49 one is exactly the same. And I'll do a couple more tests on it, but... I like that. I like this one, too. <laughs> <laughs> if you look here, you can see where the plastic gauge squinched up. And let me get my green... Let me get my gauge and see what it is. Is it between 0 .001 and 0 .0015, which is about that is about right. So we're good. Um, we'll clean this off, and then we'll go ahead and put the rest of the caps on after we lubricate with uh, assembly lube very well. We'll drop the crank in. Now, do you have to do that for every one of them? Yes. No, I'm just just. Well, you don't do it for there or there. No, I don't care. Okay. That just means that it's it should be right. Um, you're depending that the rebuilder actually put it together correctly. So there you go. Alright, so I'm going to take the crank back out. And like I said, you don't want to be rotating it around without any lube in it. Um, but for measurement purposes, you want nothing else in there except for, um, you know, the bearings. So I'm going to carefully remove it. And then we're going to lube those bearings up. And this is mainly to get it lube before you start it up. Virgin metal. And I'd like to make sure it's just distributed here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm at Sutton's and my phone is charging, and we're busy. <laughs> yeah.
Alright, that's good. You're actually right. I looked at the thing. So my cheap torque wrench worked as well as the expensive one. Yeah. So we got our crank in and it feels good. I don't feel no moving around. It does feel good. Alright, so the next thing that we're going to do on this engine build, we've got our crank in. We're going to be doing our pistons. And Mark has put the new rods on the pistons and they're ready to go. Because these are new pistons, they're clean. You don't have to clean out any of the grooves. You don't have to worry about any of that. And we're going to look at a couple things before we install the piston rings. So I'll squirt just a little marble mystery oil on the cylinder wall. Make sure it's good and lubricated. And we're going to take our ring, and I'm going to take the ring and put it inside the cylinder. And what you're checking for is to make sure that the piston ring isn't too big for the cylinder. And you can see that there's very little gap, and that's good. That looks that looks awesome. So these are the correct rings. They're 30 over, and that's how this engine's bored. So that looks really good. Now when you're doing your pistons, right, you'll notice that the piston has an arrow to the top it also has the markings that it's 30 over this is the, because it's a new piston it's got the molly bendium or whatever you call this crap on the side for the uh, skirts and you always want to install this to the front of the motor great now we've got three different types of rings you've got your oil rings top and bottom in the center portion and you've got a top and bottom ring it's real easy for these to fall out of the box and get them mixed up on a Jeep motor you have two separate types of rings. Let's see if you can see this. On a Jeep motor, you've got basically two types of rings. You've got one that's kind of a black face, and then one that's got more shiny on the edge. The black one, if you look closely, has a dot here. The black one, see if I can get it on the camera, black one has a dot here. So there's your top, and this is actually not the top ring, but the uh, second ring. And I was watching a guy yesterday install them incorrectly on YouTube. He put this one on the top, and he put this one on the bottom. So that's just retarded. Alright, so let's get these put on. This is what's called a ring spreader. This makes your job a little bit easier. You can put it on the ring, and instead of trying to manhandle it down, just put it on, you slide it down the thing and let it go. And this thing's, these work great. So that's what we're going to use to put it on here. First one we're going to put on when we're doing this is the oil ring in the center, this piece. And it just kind of butts up in there. Then you're going to put your top of your oil ring in. You don't use a spreader on these because they're so thin. You don't need it. It'll just they'll flop in there. And there's your oil ring. Now we're going to look at our gaps and make sure that they're in the right spots before we uh, button it up. But now we can go ahead and put our second ring on, which is going to be the one with the dot here. Is it the dot? That's going to go up to the second ring position. Okay. 
And the third ring, the top ring, or the compression ring, the real compression ring, this one, it's got kind of a whitish edge and it has no dots to it. And that is your top ring. We're going to put that one on. Okay, so our rings are on our pistons. The last thing we want to do is stagger our oil rings. <clears throat> and you can find this chart online, it's just about anywhere. Just Google um, piston ring, uh, stagger, whatever. And they're all pretty much about like this. So if you look at it, you're going to have your top compression ring, your oil ring expander gaps on the bottom, uh, compression ring second, top of oil ridge gap, bottom of ring gap. So basically you're just going to do it that way, and it prevents blow-by, and it's not very difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up before we put our um, compression ring on it. All right, so I've got my rings all staggered on the piston, and it's ready to install, and I've got my um, ring compressor, piston compressor, squeezer, squeezer tool. And I've got my piston ring compressor. Now, let me give you a little heads up on the um, staggering of the rings. I've talked to like really, really expensive engine builders, and he says if you get close, and as long as they're not on top of each other, it's not a super critical thing as far as like your spacing. So don't sit there for an hour and try to get them just exactly like the diagram because it's not going to make any difference. Um, you get them not on top of each other, and you won't have any blow by. You'll be in good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and get my lubricant. And I'm using Marvel Mystery Oil because it's good, light lubricant. It's mineral oil, and it's not synthetic. I don't want synthetic oil because you're wanting these rings to break in once you start it. So we'll get it all good and juiced, and I'll put a little bit more on top once I get it in. And then you're just going to take your Allen key start tightening down get it straight and do it and you can see that it's well lubricated because it's sliding in and out pretty easily You want to make sure that you get it on there real square because if you start trying to put it in the cylinder hole without all these rings compressed, you're going to break a ring. And you don't want that. That sucks. Okay, that feels pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll squirt a little bit more oil in the cylinder before I put it in there. All right, torque it down to 33. Alright, so the bottom end is done. We got the crank in, we got the rods on. These are torqued to 33. Those are 80 pounds a piece on your mains. And uh, she's ready to get flipped over and we can start doing the uh, lifters, camshaft, timing components, everything else. But this is, the, this is a big part of it that we are finished with now. 
So I'm excited about that. All right, so that's the end of a long day, man, getting that crank and the uh, rods put in, all the pistons installed. Uh, I did have a problem with um, the first ring compressor that I had. That was a piece of crap. It didn't have little ridges at the bottom, so it kept trying to go down in the cylinder, so I had to go buy another ring compressor. After that, it went in pretty easily. Um, just lube it up really well. Make sure that you keep it lubricated when you're putting this thing together, and you should be in really good shape. Follow your torque settings and... Uh, the snap-on wrench was identical to the cheap Harbor Freight one, so there you go. And when you're done with your Harbor Freight one, make sure that you loosen it up and back your spring off because that's what causes them to get out of adjustment when that spring gets compressed. If you take all the tension off of them, they stay fairly accurate for a cheap little uh, torque wrench. So I don't want to hear anything about using a Harbor Freight because I double-checked it. All day long I kept double-checking with my uh, snap-on one, and that one worked just as well. So there you go. Go figure that. Alright, tomorrow, or the next day that you'll see a video on it, <laughs> I'll be working on putting the camshaft in, the timing components, the lifters, uh, everything else that goes on the bottom end of it, and then we can start doing the head and moving up. But that's a first, good first day as far as getting the, the uh, pistons and the crank put in. And it's time for a beer. I'm having a Land Shark, which was brewed in uh, St. Louis, and Randy is having a Labatt's, which was... Probably brewed in St. Louis. I don't know. It's supposed to be imported from Canada. So it's probably like double the price. Yeah. Half the taste. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're going to crack open a beer and enjoy the rest of the night. I'm David from the Redneck Garage with Randy. Keep turning wrenches. <laughs>